Hey what's up studs, my name is Ryan or MNR Productions and today we're taking a look at a LEGO Star Wars set that is the first of its kind. It's the first LEGO Star Wars set ever in the MBS which stands for Master Builder Series and it is Betrayal at Cloud City. LEGO gave it the set number 75222. It includes 2,812 pieces. It will cost you $350 and it will have 18 minifigures and then LEGO says it also includes an R2-D2 and IG-88 droid. So depending on how you count minifigures that's 20 minifigures but lego is only saying 18 traditional minifigures as i said it is the first ever mbs set and that's master builder series so this is going to be a new line or a new term just used on big play sets so we could have seen this in the past if lego had come up with the term earlier on sets like the death star or the assault on hoth and we're definitely going to see it in the future with whatever lego whips up as far as large play sets go i'm glad that they've made this term i think it's a great distinction between a big play set and a big collector set the box presents the set and its contents very neatly. It carries over the beautiful UCS box design found on sets like the Y-Wing and Millennium Falcon. So this is something I'm actually very happy about. It's almost exactly the same as UCS box art, except it just doesn't say Ultimate Collector Series. I would think it would say Master Builder Series, but they didn't put that on there. I don't know why. Maybe this was a late decision by LEGO to classify it as something else. I'm not really sure. But unfortunately, the box art doesn't distinguish it as MBS. It just doesn't say UCS. Much to my surprise, they actually included a decorated box inside with a quote from Lando reading, I've just made a deal that'll keep the Empire out of here forever. I thought this packaging would stay exclusive to the UCS sets, but am delighted with its inclusion here. I would like to turn our attention to the minifigures included in the set. There are 18 in total, along with IG-88 and R2-D2, which as I mentioned before, LEGO doesn't count as a minifigure here. By my count, we have 11 new exclusive minifigures. They may be released in future sets, no way to know yet, but they're new for October 2018. First up, we have the Ugnaught, who is in a different uniform than we've ever had the Ugnaught before, and that's that's nice because there are a few different Ugnaughts in Cloud City, so this is just a different one included. I kind of wish they included more than one, but I'll take the one we get, I suppose. The two Bespin guards are incredible. I really love the guy with the mustache. That's probably my favorite, but they have very nice little blue hats, and I really like the torso print on there. Just kind of a very fancy print. And they also are carrying some very neat little blasters, which are actually Lego pieces that weren't originally made to be blasters, but Lego actually repurposes them sometimes for things like this. The Cloud Car Pilots are the first of their kind. They've never been made before in lego and i'm really happy that lego was able to make them in this set honestly i never knew these were a thing until they were rumored to be in this set i always assumed that lobot was the one that was flying the twin pod cloud car because the original twin pod cloud car included the lobot minifigure to pilot the cloud car i just i never thought there were actually cloud car pilots i never knew this this is something i didn't know about so i really love these figures they're something just brand new to me that i had never ever known about before i love the prints on their face they have the little visor printed on there and they both have double sided faces so you can change around the expressions they also have some very nice shiny pearl light gray blasters the Lobot minifigure is an improvement upon the previous versions, and you won't be disappointed here. I love this Lobot minifigure. It's a very simple design. The printing goes all the way around the head. The set also includes an absolutely stunning, beautiful Luke Skywalker. I love the dark tan torso on this character. I think it looks incredible. He has a blue lightsaber and a little blaster. Again, he just looks incredible. You have a nice leg print with some pockets on it, I suppose. Then moving on to his torso print, just a very solid print. You got a belt there, and then you got some more pockets on the front. And then, of course, you have the parting in the middle of the shirt. And then his face. His face is my favorite, favorite part. I think it almost looks too good. Like, it looks exactly like you would see in Star Wars Episode 5 when Darth Vader is staring down Luke telling him he's his father like I love it I love that face and then on the other side you're gonna have a face that's a little bit more muted not quite as crazy as this black eye. we get two Princess Leia minifigures we have one where she's more in her dress up attire and that looks very very good it actually uses the new Lego brick leg piece and you'll see that that can have printing on the front and the back which actually looks very nice I love that the print goes from the torso to the front of her legs on the front and it works really well same thing around back it just very nice continuous prints they work really well on lego minifigures and i like the leia minifigure here with the red and white color scheme the other Leia we actually see in the UCS Millennium Falcon or a version of this type of Leia, so it's nothing super special to this set, but it is included and I do like it. 
You'll then find two versions of Han Solo as well. You have the Han Solo that's about to be lowered into Carbonite, which isn't as cool as the other Han Solo. The one that's about to be lowered into Carbonite does have two faces, though, so you can have him with his squinty eyes and stuff, or you can just have him kind of sitting there kind of scared, and you can cuff him with the handcuffs Lego includes, which is pretty awesome. The other Han Solo is one of the best Han Solo minifigures ever, and I'm not even kidding. This minifigure has an incredible torso print, incredible print around back. He's got the typical Han Solo hair to typical Han Solo face, nothing uh, super crazy about that. But if you look to the legs, the legs are dual molded. This does not happen often on Lego minifigures. Lego has pulled out all the stops for the Lego Star Wars line here. So on the right side of his pants here, he actually has his gun holster. It's open, like he's holding his gun, so there's no gun in the gun holster, but I love it. It's a great detail that LEGO has never included on a Han Solo minifigure before, I think. Looking around to the front of the figure, you can just see more of the strapping for that, and then on the other side, there's even more printing. So it's a crazy, crazy minifigure. I'm absolutely in love with it. It's one of the best LEGO minifigures ever. I think this one's going to be very highly held among LEGO Star Wars fans. Moving on, we get a Chewbacca, a C-3PO, and R2-D2 minifigure. No need to look too deep into these minifigures. They're pretty standard we see them in other sets Chewbacca does have the stud shooter bowcaster which I think is great I think kids have to love that thing that is a great little stud shooter works really nicely but other than that these are just kind of three of your classic characters and nothing too special if you don't have them already this is a great set to pick them up and here we have Lando Calrissian he has two different faces which I'll show in a second but his cape is really the highlight of this figure you'll see that the cape has printing on the inside it's a double-sided cape so you have blue on one side and you have this gold color on the inside with some printing on the inside side and man this cape is crazy good it's a nice improvement over the 2003 version and I love this Lando figure I really like his hair piece as well I think it works really well and we do have a few more figures we have Darth Vader and a couple of stormtroopers of course we've seen these figures in sets past Darth Vader a very cool villain of course he's got his head piece that can open up you guys know how that works and then you have a couple of stormtroopers flanking him on either side with leg printing so that's a nice nice inclusion and of course they are the original trilogy stormtroopers so you can't go wrong there and then we have Boba Fett and IG IG-88 as our two bounty hunters, IG-88, a simple droid, and then we have Boba Fett, who is just an incredible Cloud City Boba Fett that I think a lot of people have been wanting, printing all over the arms, legs, torso, there's just so many little details on this figure, you can see he's got like a wrist rocket, he's got his little Mandalore insignia on his left arm, like, it's a pretty crazy figure, of course he uses the, the standard little floodlight or whatever, the antenna piece that goes on top of his helmet there, and you can take his helmet off to reveal Boba Fett's face, which actually looks strikingly similar to a clone trooper's face, what do you know? He also has a very cool little blaster which is an odd design it has like a lightsaber hilt on the end like it's just a crazy little thing that legos put together there but it works i do like it that's boba fett that is all of the minifigures let's go ahead and take a look at the instructions which are over 400 pages long they make building this behemoth a breeze to be honest they also include an interview with the set designer and graphic designer and those are great reads you guys should totally try to pause the video and read it or if you pick up the set for yourself obviously take the time and read through they have some interesting tidbits in there you might have never thought about thinking of when what goes into the design of lego sets so i love they include that in the master builder series and ucs line of lego star wars sets now there are a few errors in the instruction manual though nothing too major but you'll find them in there if you've seen my video i'll link it below it's called literally unbuildable betrayal at cloud city you're not going to want to miss that one a lot of people got mad at me for making that but i thought it was funny and i'm sticking to my guns on that one the model itself has about 10 different compartments allowing you to recreate many scenes from star wars episode five the empire strikes back i think this is a great little way to do it they split it up very nicely there are also two ships included a slave one and the lesser known twin pod cloud car which lego has only made once before turns out that the original cloud car set was my first lego set they have certainly come a long way i love what they did with this one of the major complaints people will have about the cloud car is that in the movies, yes, it is orange, but the original Lego version was red, and this version is also red. The reasoning behind that is that the orange color Lego would need to make this thing in, they don't produce a lot of, and Lego can't just produce all these different pieces in orange very easily or very cheaply. So Lego went ahead and made the decision to make it red again, which is color inaccurate, but this is a playset I think a lot of kids don't care. I certainly didn't care when I got my first twin 
Golden Pod Cloud Car back in the early 2000s. Like, I just, I never, you know, I think it's fine. I think it looks great in red. I love it. The new Cloud Car can squeeze, and I mean squeeze, both Cloud Car Pilot minifigures inside. They are tightly packed in there. I mean, there is no room to breathe. But they fit in there, which is what matters. You'll find a sticker on the top panel above their heads as extra detail. And I'm actually not a fan of the sticker. I think it's unnecessary to me. It actually adds a color tone that doesn't fit with the rest of the ship. It has a dark red on there, and there are no dark red pieces on this cloud car. So I think it actually looks better if you flip the piece around and just don't show the sticker. You'll find blue coming out of the back to represent the thrust coming from the engines and stud shooters underneath. Don't shoot your eye out. No, seriously, don't shoot your eye out, says in the instructions. Come on, guys. The Slave 1 is absolutely gorgeous. If you can look past the fact that it's way smaller than a lot of LEGO's older Slave 1 sets, you'll see an absolute beauty. It's actually more on scale with the original LEGO Star Wars Slave 1 from back in 2000, but obviously it looks like a million times better. Like, I just can't even put it into words how much better this one looks than it did 18 years ago. It is obviously more like the UCS one. It's a very scaled down looking UCS Slave 1, I guess. The underside uses trans orange to represent thrust and their space for Han Solo and Carbonite, which actually works very well. You just clip him right on in there. The wings rotate with the ship, but unfortunately the forward guns are fixed in place. So this is something we haven't seen before. Usually the forward guns you can spin on your own. They don't rotate with the ship, but you can spin them on your own. This set, they couldn't figure it out. It was too small of a space to go ahead and make those be able to rotate, which is unfortunate, but I think it actually works just fine. It's not a big deal to me. The cockpit is cozy, but it works not quite as tight as the one on the cloud car, I would say. You can fit Boba Fett in pretty easily in a seated position. There are no control panels or anything in there, unfortunately, so you're missing a good bit of detail that you would find on a larger model. And you can place Boba Fett's blaster on the clip found here. The stud shooters work as expected, but I'm perplexed as to why they used blue instead of orange studs. I think orange just kind of fits the slave one better, and then they threw blue on there. It just looks weird to me. So you, the, the cloud car does include two extra orange studs, so you can totally change them out. Despite my skepticism about the slave one and cloud car models, I can't say that I really, really like them. It's also what I think a lot of LEGO Star Wars sets may be scaled like soon. So in the past, we would have slave ones that were really big. They were like 80 bucks, but I think in the future, we're going to have slave ones that are like this that are forty dollars thirty dollars you know it's gonna be lego can't keep making the sets just as big and they keep getting more expensive they're gonna at some point have to downsize a lot and they've been doing it with sets like the republic fighter tank and stuff but i think it's gonna become a lot more common and i think this is a great example of kind of where lego could be heading with a lot of their models the main model is topped off with a micro cloud city which looks good enough to me the rest of the model is visually held together by four beams while they provide no actual structural support they are extremely important in giving this playset a coherent aesthetic Having removed them, you can see why they are so important. This set becomes a very, very big hodgepodge, and it doesn't look very good without those four beams. So you might not like the design. I personally am okay with it, but without those four beams, this set just wouldn't work. On their website, LEGO breaks up the rest of the set into sections. Section 1 contains the landing platform with a sliding entrance door. The landing pad can also be easily removed for transporting the set because it's not actually connected to the set, it just kind of clips on underneath and then you can pull it right on out very easily. The carbon freezing chamber also has this feature, but we'll take a look at that later. It will easily fit the sleeve one on there, and it is a simple design with trans yellow lights, if you will, on it to tell the pilots where to go. There's nothing too crazy going on on the landing pad, it's just kind of a plain tan pad. In section two, you'll find the dining room where you can seat five minifigures. The table has some glassware and food on it, which I think is a nice little detail. The coolest part of the room though might be the micro scale cloud city. It's used as decoration here, and I think the dining room overall looks decent. It is a little bit tight, it is a little bit small in there, but it's an improvement over the 2003 versions. They do also have some nice stickers for decor on the walls, and of course there's a bunch of windows, so it kind of opens up the room a little bit. There's also a small subsection with a lounge, nothing super special, but I am particularly disappointed with the color of the plants. They've used green here, but in the movie they do look brown, and they used brown in the previous LEGO Star Wars Cloud City set. I'm a little bit disappointed that they didn't use brown again. I thought they would, but I guess green does kind of make it look more lively. It makes it look like a cleaner play set, I suppose, but man, I kind of wish they were brown. I just assumed they would be brown. That's It's such a small complaint. I don't know why I care so much about that. The largest subsection in section two is a promenade with a tree sculpture, which I think actually looks pretty good. There's a mural on the wall, which I think looks pretty cool as well. It's just got a very Cloud City aesthetic to it and doors that can open up and lead to other sections of the playset. The promenade actually leads to five separate sections of the set. 
Section 3 is where one of the most famous scenes in all of Star Wars takes place. Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father. He told me enough. He told me you killed him. No. I am your father. This balcony is beautifully designed and it uses clear bricks underneath to create the illusion that it is actually hanging off of the model. They use some malleable plastic so you can bend the railings and make them the shape that they're supposed to be, which actually works really nicely. You can have Luke hang off, like you can do a lot of different things with this area. You move on, you can find the maintenance cabin, which is small, but I do like its design. It's a very nice little simple design and it actually can open up a few different ways so you can get in with Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker there. It perfectly leads into the carbon freezing chamber with a wonderfully designed mechanism to drop Han and freeze him. All you have to do is push the small lever. It's a very simple thing to do. It's no problem. It is, however, the most challenging part of this set's build is just getting that mechanism right. So be very careful when you're building that if you go out and pick up this set. I do really, really like it, though. It's a major improvement over any past freezing chamber designs. They've had one in the 2003 Cloud City set, which hails in comparison to this one. They actually had it as its own standalone set in 2015. I believe, but this one blows the, both of those out of the water. I'll actually be doing a comparison of both Cloud City sets in the near future, so make sure you stay tuned for that. This is one of the best parts of the set. They did a decent job capturing the room's aesthetic from the movie, but unfortunately it isn't perfect. The wall from the neighboring section is tan, and it doesn't mesh well. There's a small little area, kind of like a walkway, underneath the floor of the freezing chamber, which is nice, and I'm happy with everything but the wall color here. The fourth and final section has a beautiful dark dark red corridor that leads right into the interrogation chamber. The interrogation chair is very well designed and you can place Han Solo right in there, no problem, so the Imperials can interrogate him. You'll also find a prison cell. There's not too much to the prison cell. The next subsection is a garbage processing room with an incinerator conveyor belt where you can place C-3PO onto and deactivated IG-88. It's a solid little room to help you recreate another scene from the movie. Finally, you have a hangar for the cloud car. I'm not a huge fan of this section, but it does provide a space to store the cloud car, so I suppose that's a positive. You'll find a small tool rack and not much more. You can actually place the cloud car pilot's weapons on the other side of the hangar from the tool rack. There's a couple of clips there. They just clip right on. If you remove the cloud car though, you will find a hatch that has a ladder and it leads down into the abyss underneath Cloud City. You can use this to recreate the scene of Luke with his hand cut off, hanging off the bottom of Cloud City. The underside of the set isn't pretty, and it doesn't have to be. It does its job of supporting and holding up this massive playset, no complaints here. So you're probably wondering, how do you pick up and move this set? It's a little bit unintuitive, so you just grab the two sections of the set that are actually made of solid bricks. So you have the one section, which is the landing platform, you, you can just pull that away. You can pull away the carbon freezing chamber and then you pick it up by the two remaining sections. It'll just lift up no problem. Don't pick it up by the top though because then you'll just rip it off. Some other small things I would like to mention about this set before we go ahead and give my final thoughts on the set is that the overall detail with all the little stickers they've included on this set is great. There's a bunch of little stickers that have like little panels on them or the better part that they've used stickers for is like going between sections. So if you have one section that's predominantly white and then it's right next to a section that's like gray, one example here is the little lounge, you have a white sticker to kind of make the wall on that side white and so the wall on the other side can be gray. It's a nice little touch that maybe not a lot of people would notice but I love the way Lego did that. So $350 for this massive Cloud City playset. What do you guys think? Vote on the poll right now. Is it worth it? Is it not worth it? I think I, I'm honestly, after I built this set, I was skeptical at first when we first got all the pictures and everything. A lot of people were trashing this set. Honestly, I was kind of in the same boat. Like I, I kind of felt like this was going to be a bad set, but I am actually very happy with this set. I think it's a great, great improvement upon the 2003 Cloud City set. I know that's not really what maybe Lego was going for here, but it, it's a wonderful play set. They have at least 10 different sets sections from the movie. You can create so many different scenes. You have two little ships. The Slave 1 is awesome. I think the Slave 1 might sell this set just alone. Like this Slave 1 is crazy cool for its size. You also have the Twin Pod Cloud Car, which is another set we haven't seen in a long time. I'm very happy that Lego went ahead and made this. My favorite sections from this set are definitely going to be the balcony where Darth Vader reveals to Luke that he is his father. I also really like the mechanism for the carbon freezing chamber. And for some reason, the torture device is another really cool part of the set to me. But man, this is a really cool play set. $350. I, I know it's expensive for a lot of people. Maybe you save up your money over the next year and pick it up when there's like double VIP points. But man, this is a really cool play set. If you love Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back, you're going to love this play set. If you're really looking for a set to 
display though. This is not that set. Don't buy this set for display. It doesn't look great on display. It takes up a lot of space. I don't even know where I'm going to put it yet as I'm as of filming this review. Right now it's just kind of sitting on my review table, but I don't really know where to put this set. It's just so massive. Kids are going to love this. They just are. Like I would have loved this 10 years ago. Just no question about it. And I love it now, honestly. But no question about it. I would have played with it like till I destroyed it probably. Like this thing would have got its worth. I'm going to give it a rating of 8 out of 10. The price could always be lower. There are a few little details that I feel like we're just kind of lacking. But other than that, the minifigure selection is impeccable. I love it. I think all the figures in this set are great. LEGO has done a great job. And I think I am very pleased with the way this set has turned out. Anyway, if you studs did enjoy my review on the LEGO Star Wars Master Builder Series Betrayal at Cloud City set, please leave a like. It definitely helps out the channel. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And if you have any questions for me about this set, if you have any comments about this set, leave it down in the comment section down below. I'm curious what you guys have to think. And don't forget to vote on the polls. You can just click on the I button on the top right of your screen right now. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.